Hey everybody, I am John Barker and welcome back to another episode of Here to Record Show and Tell. In this episode we're going to take a look at my brand new ATEM TV Studio in a Flight Case build. You'll find links to anything that I mention in the video description and you'll also find a link to my kit on kit.com. As this is a rebuild from my previous setup, there are a few things that I really learned from that and wanted to make sure I made happen in this new build. And those were that the new case needed to be lighter and smaller than the previous one. It needed to be an overall cleaner setup, so less cables running into the front and into the back. I wanted more built into it for a faster setup. I really wanted it to be a little more pro and professional looking, so no more white cables, just get rid of those. And finally, I wanted live streaming to be built into the case. We'll get back to that list a little bit later in the video, but for now, let's take a look at everything that's in the case. The case itself is a 2U 19 inch shallow rack bag from Gear for Music. I like this case because it's shallow, it's small and it's exactly what I wanted. I actually had the 4U version of this case before and then I stepped right down to the 2U for this build. You can see here that side by side there's a big difference in the overall height of the two cases. I also made a few little adjustments to the case. I took off one of the handles and I took off the pocket at the top because it was just not something I used really. You can also see a few hinges bolted on there and we'll get back to that later. So for the video mixer in my ATEM setup, it's obviously an ATEM and it's the ATEM Television Studio HD. I have made a video about this in the past but most of all I like how small it is and the fact that it sits nicely in this case. A huge improvement for me over the previous build is that this does 1080p 25 and 1080p 50 whereas before I was stuck with 1080i 50 and now I'm done with that and I've moved on. And another thing I love about this is that it has a hardware panel on the front of course so I can just reach out and press buttons and change cameras instead of having to rely on my laptop. In terms of recording I'm using the HyperDeck Studio Mini from Blackmagic. It's an SD card recorder. Again we've got a video on that if you want to check it out but basically we have a stack of SD cards ready to go and we can record a whole conference or events to these cards. And I also love that it pairs nicely with the ATEM and sits right beside it in that two-thirds to one-third ratio. For the monitor we're using the SmartView Duo from Blackmagic Design. Now, this thing is probably the first thing that will change in the future of the case. The screen resolution is just not good enough for what we want but we already had it lying around and as you can see here we attach it to the top of the case so that you can flip it up whenever you get to the gig and then flip it back down again whenever it's time to pack up and go home. The cables are already connected to the back of the monitor so that we can run into a venue and be ready to go within a few minutes. The only thing that didn't fit in the case was this large HyperDeck power supply. So we've opted just to leave that separate and um, we can just plug that into a, a nearby power strip. Speaking of power, the power strip that we built right into the case is the t rex or the Trax Power 8S USB. And you can see it here, it has a couple of USB ports on the side. We didn't really intend to use these actually, these were just a little nice to have but since then they've ended up powering our fans and our mini PC. And speaking of fans, I had these two USB uh, fans lying around and I was able just to mount them at the back of the case. I decided to mount them on little hinges so that they could swivel in and out. That way you can uh, move them out of the way for setup, plugging in SDI cameras, etc. And then you can swing them back into place whenever the time comes. These are set up in a specific way to bring cool air in through the right and then blow out or exhaust the hot air from the left. Uh, it works well with the ATEM and the HyperDeck because that's the way they're set up. So the airflow runs the same way. In terms of networking, we went for this ASUS router, uh, mainly because of the small footprint and it fit nicely in the case. That was one of our main draws towards it. Having this built in means that all the devices work together and talk together, but then we can come to a venue and we can plug into their internet and we can live stream through that. And like a lot of things in this case, it's attached with Velcro. So there's a Velcro on the top of the router and there's some on the top of the ATEM and then they just stick together. You'll notice that there's no audio things in this case and that's because all of our audio comes in via the cameras. So we have XLR connections on those and there's no need to take up any space in the case with a mixer or with anything like that. In terms of live streaming, we didn't really go the way we thought we would. In the end, we have this Ultra Studio Mini Recorder for now and it's sitting on the top of the case mounted with some Velcro. You can see here that it kind of acts as a monitor stand slash stopper as well, so it has a dual purpose. I think someday we will change this and maybe put a webcaster or something like that inside the case. There just really isn't that much room and uh, I wanted to put this inside the case too but I remembered whenever I used to use it that it gets so hot uh, so I really didn't want to have that really hot thing shoved inside the case somewhere and causing some issues with heat flow. A few other things to mention, the rack shelf is the Terranex Mini Rack Shelf from Blackmagic. We have a ton of Velcro in there sticking on the router and doing some cable management for us. We're using these thin SDI cables unlike the thick ones we used to use. 
Some of them we're using as they are and some of them we cover with tape just to make them a little more inconspicuous and uh, not as noticeable. And also crammed in there is a little mini PC. It's a Latte Panda, one single board, which runs Windows 10. You could put any mini PC in there, but we have this one on hand and uh, we talked about it in the past about how we used it with our setup. And that's everything. It's all rearranged a million times just to get it the right way in there. So it all fits snugly and doesn't crash around whenever we're moving. And looking to the future, a few small things I want to tweak will be that I'll paint these hinges black just to give them a little more subtle look. We may think about stepping up to the 3U case size if we want to add things like our decimator inside there, HDMI splitters, and of course that live streaming uh, box that we'll someday put in there. And a very important thing that we will definitely add is a light in there. You can see how dark it is, and in a dark environment, it's gonna be hard to figure out where cables go. So we'll get a light in there very soon. And now we're gonna take a look at the checklist again to see if we hit what we wanted to hit. First of all, we wanted it to be lighter and smaller than the previous case. Well, it's not really lighter than the old one. It's actually about the same weight, but it does end up being smaller. So that means it takes up less space in my case, allowing for more stuff to be put on top of it in the case. Yes, it's a cleaner setup, now all the cables come through the back instead of some coming in through the front. Yes, more things have been built into this case for a faster setup in terms of the HyperDeck Studio is now built into the case and the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder is also sitting there ready to go. It's definitely a more pro design, I think. No more white cables. Everything's a lot cleaner, a lot tidier, but we haven't really built in the live streaming. That's something I'm gonna fix in the future by getting a hardware box actually inside my uh, flight case. That just leaves me with some advice to give you if you're going to do something like this. It's plan, yes, and then buy maybe the big ticket items and the things that you definitely want. And then from there, put it all together and see what you need to make it more professional or more easy to use or whatever the case may be. Don't just go out and buy everything you think you need. I have a few things back there that I thought I would use and put in the case, but I just simply don't have room for them. So that's my best advice to you is, yes, you should plan it, but don't buy everything at once. Just buy things as you go and then test and see what you need to go from there. So thanks for watching. I do hope you find that useful and hopefully it'll give you some advice or some general direction to go in. If you're gonna build something like this, let me know in the comments if you've got any questions about any of the items in this video.